I'm James Baylog, the founder and director of the Extreme Ice Survey, and um, uh, the, our project is really about uh, trying to uh, accumulate photographic uh, evidence of how um, uh, glaciers and ice sheets are retreating in various parts of the world uh, as a consequence of climate change. So we have uh, we've been amassing a, a huge portfolio of images looking at uh, the beauty of these landscapes, of course, and just normal single frame photography. And yet we've also been accumulating a huge body of work, a million images more or less, uh, showing time-lapse pictures of how glaciers are retreating in various locations. We have, uh, as we sit here today, we have 34 time-lapse cameras shooting every 20 or 30 minutes, as long as it's daylight, uh, by Mount Everest in Nepal, uh, in Iceland, in Greenland, in uh, northern Canada, in uh, the, the uh, Montana Rockies, or the uh, northern Rockies of the U.S., and in Alaska. So we have, we have a widespread uh, perspective on how the world is changing. The glaciers changing are the three-dimensional manifestation of climate change. It's a way that you can see it in time and space and volume in a way that you can't with a graph that symbolizes numbers, measurements. Uh, at the same time, uh, not everything, of course, is encapsulated in the images. The images can only take you so far, so we have to build our uh, photographic representation on this uh, upon a base, a bedrock of scientific data. You know, it's really the science and the visual art working in tandem that illuminates and animates this story. You know, so much of the story of climate change is about scientific graphs and measurements, and it can, tends to be pretty dry, and most people just glaze over really fast when they, when they hear this information. But uh, I think what we've been able to provide is a real doorway into this subject so that people can really, really engage with it and understand it uh, with, with their heart and their minds. There's been a startling, shocking uh, conjunction between the release of the film and the change in public consciousness because of Hurricane Sandy, that's for sure. And it's a tragedy what happened uh, on the East Coast of the United States. I've, I've spent a lot of time in a number of those areas and I find it immensely sad. Um, so the two things together, however, the film and Sandy, have created a completely different mentality about, about uh, uh, climate change than we've had in a long time, maybe ever. Um, and what we see is that there's been a pattern, you know, like of, of, of extreme and violent uh, events connected with climate and weather that is really outside the box. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Hurricane Sandy is a consequence of climate change, but I can say that the overall pattern of extreme weather events, and that pattern goes back now a number of years, uh, is most definitely connected with climate change. I've always been looking at this, this contact zone between humans and nature, and certainly what we're looking at here with the Extreme Ice Survey is a continuation of, of that fascination. And in this project with the ice, I've learned really what mortality is all about. It's given me a new sense of mortality, because when you when you see these gigantic features of the landscape disappearing in front of your eyes, you can't help but realize that you, this little human being made out of flesh and bones, muscle and skeleton, um, is going to crumble and decay and pass away too. And so that's, um, that's a beautiful thing in its, in its way. It's a sad thing, of course. We all feel the sadness of the fact that we're not immortal. But it's a beautiful thing because it reminds you that, that this life is precious, this place we live on is precious, this place called Earth, this land, you know, that's all around us here, this air we breathe is precious, and the glaciers helped me understand that and, and stay focused on that.